Hi there, everyone. I'm First Alert meteorologist Brian Bachman. Want to look ahead to something that uh, we're going to be seeing happening in the skies this coming weekend, Saturday, October 14th, to be specific. You may have been hearing this making the rounds on social media and the internet already, but anticipation building ahead of a ring of fire solar eclipse that's going to be happening. Not fully visible for us here in the Carolinas, but we're not going to walk away empty handed either. But I want to talk to you a little bit about the different types of solar eclipses there are, breaking down what the differences are and exactly what's going to be happening when we look ahead to next weekend. So starting with a total solar eclipse, this one fairly straightforward. We look up toward the sky and any solar eclipse occurs when the moon is at just the right positioning in its orbit around Earth that it briefly passes in front of the sun and it casts its shadow onto a portion of Earth. Now, in the case of a total solar eclipse, again, straightforward, the moon, as it's cutting in front of the sun, blocks the sun out entirely, making for this aura-like appearance around the silhouette of the moon. What we're left with in that brief period where the moon is in front of the sun, again, in a total solar eclipse, the only part of the sun that remains visible is the sun's corona, which is essentially its outer atmosphere. Again, kind of has that almost halo-like aura to it. Uh, day also briefly turns to night for any observers on the ground who manage to get into the path of totality of a solar eclipse. We, of course, saw one here in South Carolina back in 2017 that probably uh, is... Uh, uh, sticking in a lot of folks' minds, thinking about this kind of thing. The difference in the solar eclipse that's coming up on October 14th, this coming weekend, same general process, except this one's known technically as an annular solar eclipse. Annular meaning uh, ring-shaped in Latin. And uh, what this creates is same basic process. Moon cuts in front of the sun again for a brief period in its orbit around the Earth. But this time around, the moon is a little farther away from Earth when it does so. The moon's orbit around the Earth isn't a perfect circle. So there are periods where the moon is farther away from Earth, periods where it's closer. It's why we have things like supermoons throughout the year, but that's a different story. In this case, moon is a little farther away, so when it cuts in front of the sun, it can't quite block it out completely, and it leaves a ring of sunlight around the silhouette of the moon, creating this still very visually stunning ring of fire uh, around uh, the, uh, again, the silhouette of the moon, so to speak. A stunning sight. Day doesn't quite completely turn to night, but it gets a little more dusky, almost, uh, you know, twilight kind of light that would uh, settle in around that time. But an impressive sight all the same. Unfortunately, for us here in the Carolinas, we are not going to see this portion of uh, the uh, upcoming solar eclipse. Uh, this is going to be mostly reserved for folks in the southwestern United States and then carving a path through Central America uh, and into northern South America coming up on Saturday. But like I said, does not mean we're walking away empty-handed. There will still be plenty to, uh, worth looking for here coming up on Saturday here in the Carolinas. Our view is going to be a partial solar eclipse. It all begins at about 1037 coming up on Saturday morning. So far, the weather does look like it's going to cooperate, but of course, we'll be paying very close attention to the forecast throughout the week. Beginning at 1037, the moon will start to cut in front of the sun and will reach maximum eclipse coming up at 1158 a.m., so just before noon uh, on Saturday. We'll see a maximum eclipse of about 56%, so you can kind of see it roughed out there. Still significant, the sun will look somewhat crescent-shaped uh, as this happens for us here. You'll notice a bit of a dimming of the overall kind of quality of the sunlight. It lo might look a little more akin to a mostly cloudy day, even though the sky may very well be clear. Uh, as long as you have protective eyewear, make sure they are special, properly rated uh, sun protection or uh, uh, welder's glasses, things like that. Uh, you can look up at the sun uh, during this time, and you'll notice that it looks crescent-shaped. And then uh, moving on from there, certainly afternoon, the moon will begin to move away from the sun. It'll take about another hour and a half, and then the eclipse will fully wind up coming to an end uh, around 1.22 on Saturday. So even though we're missing out, on the ring of fire portion of this solar eclipse. Uh, still very much worth taking a look for coming up on Saturday, and we will definitely keep you updated on the forecast throughout the week.